So I have now watched the presumed, presumed top five international films for the Oscars. Those movies are Drive My Car, Flea, A Hero, The Hand of God, and The Worst Person in the World. So essentially what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about all of them, and then I'm going to rank them. That simple. Because most of these movies, to me, to me, are really good and like would be deserving of like a Best Picture nomination, honestly. Now, that probably won't happen, at least for most of them. I don't know. But regardless, we should talk about it. So I'm just going to start in a random order. Let's talk about A Hero. A Hero is a movie I just saw, actually. I, j I just received a screener a few days ago, at least of, as of when I'm recording. Directed by Asghar Farhadi, it is Iran's official submission to the Oscars. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was really, really well made and like so, so good the way the script like unraveled as you're watching this dude. Now, I guess I should say, what is this movie about? I don't want to talk too much. Not that it's a spoilery type of movie, but you know, regardless, uh, there's a guy in prison for not paying back a debt and he gets uh, a two day leave basically. So he exits prison and some stuff happens and um, that are both good and bad. And I'll, I'll kind of leave it at that. This movie, honestly, is one of the most stressful and frustrating movies I've seen this year. And don't let that turn you off to the movie because I think it was really, really fantastic. As I was saying about the script, because, you know, this guy is just running into kind of bad luck, but also he's kind of making some a little bit of dumb choices, even though you understand it. The way the script kind of peels back the layers as everything continuously kind of falls apart. Oh, man. Oh, man. I thought this movie was fantastic. I thought it was so good. Honestly, like, it kind of did. There was a moment during the movie when I was watching where I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> I, was, I was like, holy fuck. This movie is so good. Now, it's not perfect. Um, I, I did think the movie could could be a little bit tighter. Not that this movie is long in, in any way. I think it's a little over two hours. Uh, I think thought it could have been a little bit tighter. There's a couple things that didn't really work for me that I, I don't really want to get into, you know, without spoiling anything but a hero honestly is genuinely one of the best movies that i've seen this year and i hope everyone gets a chance to watch it uh when it comes out on amazon prime and also in theaters uh this week actually as a one in recording in theaters this week it's one of the best of the year it's very frustrating and uh, you know you almost feel like shit afterwards but i think it's in a weird way it's very rewarding so it is one of the best movies of the year i did give it four stars on letterboxd so in the ranking since it's the first one i'm talking about Number one, let's talk about Flea. So Flea has been a movie that's kind of been touted as a potential Best Picture nominee for a while. Personally, I never really believed that. And I know a lot of people are skeptical on that too, considering it is an animated international documentary. That is not one, but three hurdles the movie would have to get into. It would literally have to break records and make history at the Oscars. Having said that, this movie's fantastic. <laughs> this movie is also fantastic. I don't know what you want me to say. To me, Four out of the five movies I'm talking about, and you guys can probably guess which one I'm not talking about, are genuinely fantastic movies, like worthy of being in someone's top 10 of the year. Like that's how I feel. And Flea is another case of it. Like this movie was like kind of, kind of heartbreaking. And then it fucking, in a weird way, it picks you up at the end with, in one of the best scenes of the year. And in, in my opinion, the ending of, of Flea, if, if you know what I'm talking about. I was like, it was so good and gratifying because it takes you on this fucking journey that it seems so brutal and so exhausting and tragic. And then through it all, at the end, it just like uplifts you. I mean, Jesus Christ, I need to rewatch this movie. This movie might make my top 10. Honestly. I would have to think about it. I, I mean, I, I thought this movie was just fucking excellent. This is my personal favorite documentary of the year. It is not my favorite animated movie of the year, but it probably be second i think i think this movie's great it is denmark's official submission for the oscars and i definitely think it will get multiple nominations not just an in international but also best documentary and hopefully in the best animated where i think it definitely it'll i think it'll it will get in but flea flea is very good um personally i do like a hero a bit more so because of that flea i'll put that in second right now but i also gave flea four stars all right let's talk about the hand of god paulo sorrentino's movie italy's official submission for the oscars i gotta admit right off the bat i did not care for this movie um i maybe i wasn't in the right like headspace for it i mean i was watching at home like on my computer and it was i don't know maybe i was like a little distracted but i just i couldn't really connect to the movie at all 
Uh, I think it is very well shot. You know, out, out of all these movies, it might be the just straight up the best looking, if I'm being honest, now that I'm thinking about it. But the characters I just could not really connect with at this, you know, a lot of the scenes were very meandering and not in like a there's no plot and just vibes type of way because I, you know, I actually kind of liked some of those movies, but I, I couldn't really grasp anything. And that might just be me. And I, you know, I'll fully admit, I probably do need to rewatch this, honestly. But for the hand of God, I just I could not connect to it. And, um, you know, I was a little disappointed by it, frankly. And, you know, with with not really being able to connect with it because of that, I thought the pacing kind of suffered. So honestly, I did not care for this movie. I know there are a lot of people that do really like it. And, you know, it still has a very a pretty high rating. So, you know, I'm definitely in the minority. So you guys should definitely go seek it out. It's on Netflix right now. But uh, the hand of God it's, it's going to be last here. Um, let's talk about the worst person in the world. The worst person in the world was fucking awesome. Uh, that movie was awesome. It is Norway's official submission for the Oscars. It somehow missed the Golden Globe, but uh, I think it'll still get the Oscar nomination, obviously. In a way, this movie is kind of like a slice of life. Um, it, it does remind me of Francis Ha, and I know I'm not the first one to make that comparison, but it did kind of remind me of it, and I'm very curious to see how th it'll... I don't know, it'll hold up to me or if I'll view it any differently as I continue to get older. You know, I'm 24 and now, Jesus Christ, that is old. But I thought this movie was lovely. I mean, you're watching this character kind of really just go through life. And as an audience member, you're kind of like, that's that's kind of a dumb decision. You probably shouldn't do that. But in the character's eyes, it's a totally real and rational like choice that she makes. And isn't that just kind of like what we all do, you know, like we always look back at ourselves and be like, Jesus Christ, like, why the fuck did we do that? Like, that is so stupid. But in the moment, it seems like the normal thing to do or even the right thing to do. So, you know, we're all just a bunch of fuck ups in the end. And I thought this movie was still like uplifting, honestly, but, you know, still very, very, very real. Honestly, this is just a very real movie. I absolutely loved it. This movie is in my top 10 of the year. I gave it four and a half stars. It would be number one for now. And lastly, Drive My Car, Japan's official submission for the Oscars. I am half Japanese, but I don't let Asian movies influence me or try to... I'm not biased about it. You know, fuck Snake Eyes, dude. Fuck Snake Eyes. Drive My Car is absolutely mesmerizing, dude. Drive My Car is absolutely mesmerizing. This movie is three hours long. If... You know, my, you can ask my friends, even though you don't know them. I was very nervous. I was very nervous to watch this movie. It is three hours long. And from what people are telling me, it is a very patient, borderline slow movie. And while I am fine watching those movies in a theater at home, my attention span decreases by about 69%. So I put it on and I was like, Jesus Christ, like, let me, I, I really need to focus. Like, I'm really trying to give it my best here. And when I do that, sometimes for other movies, my and my attention span just drops and I get a little antsy. I start pulling out the phone, drive my car was fantastic for a three hour movie that doesn't have any action set pieces or anything like that. It was paced so well. It is like it's not even slow, but it's a very dialogue driven movie. So it might feel that way. But for some reason, the three hours kind of flew by. Like, low-key kind of flew by, and that is the best compliment I can pay it, honestly. On top of that, it has some of the best performances I've seen of the year. It has some of the best dialogue of the year. I mean, it, it absolutely should get nominated for adaptive screenplay, like, 100%. There, there are some moments in this movie that will absolutely stick with me, and this is one of those movies that is, like, I'll give it, like, you know, like, four and a half stars, and then I think about it a few days later, and I just bump it up to a five. Like, this is one of those movies, and this is one of those movies that can absolutely do that and grow higher on my top 10, which it will be on. I don't want to talk too much about it. I want you all to experience it. It is playing nowhere near me in theaters, which really bums me out, but hopefully you guys can find it in, you know, in one way or another, whether it's in theaters or when it comes out in VOD or whatever. Drive My Car, to me, is actually the best international film I've seen this year. I've seen a handful of them. I haven't seen all of them. I want to get, I want to see more, you know, especially those on the short list here. But Drive My Car would be my number one pick for the best international film, then followed by The Worst Person in the World, A Hero, Flea, and The Hand of God. But like I said, the first four from Drive My Car to Flea are all fantastic movies. Honestly, like they should just be nominated for best picture or like at least i wouldn't have a problem with them being nominated for best picture because i think they're better than a lot of the other contenders to be honest so that is it though i just wanted to do a quick little video on that because they deserve it they deserve the attention if you guys have seen those movies let me know what you guys think of them i think four out of the five were fantastic and honestly the hand of god i probably just need to rewatch. they ain't no parasite but 
they're really fucking good.